A phosphor, most generally, is a substance that exhibits the phenomenon of luminescence. Somewhat confusingly, this includes both phosphorescent materials, which show a slow decay in brightness greater than one millisecond, and fluorescent materials, where the emission decay takes place over tens of nanoseconds. Phosphorescent materials are known for their use in radar screens and glow-in-the-dark materials, whereas fluorescent materials are common in cathode ray tube (CRT) and plasma video display screens, fluorescent lights, sensors, and white LEDs. Phosphors are often transition metal compounds or rare earth compounds of various types. The most common uses of phosphors are in CRT displays and fluorescent lights. CRT phosphors were standardized beginning around World War II and designated by the letter P, followed by a number. Phosphorus, the chemical element named for its light-emitting behavior, emits light due to chemiluminescence, not phosphorescence. In inorganic phosphors, these inhomogeneities in the crystal structure are created usually by addition of a trace amount of dopants, impurities called activators. In rare cases, dislocations or other crystal defects can play the role of the impurity. The wavelength emitted by the emission center is dependent on the atom itself and on the surrounding crystal structure. The scintillation process in inorganic materials is due to the electronic band structure found in the crystals. An incoming particle can excite an electron from the valence band to either the conduction band or the exciton band located just below the conduction band and separated from the valence band by an energy gap. This leaves an associated hole behind, in the valence band. Impurities create electronic levels in the forbidden gap. The excitons are loosely bound electron hole pairs that wander through the crystal lattice until they are captured as a whole by impurity centers. The latter then rapidly de excite by emitting scintillation light. Fast component. In the case of inorganic scintillators, the activator impurities are typically chosen so that the emitted light is in the visible range or near UV, where photomultipliers are effective. The holes associated with electrons in the conduction band are independent from the latter. Those holes and electrons are captured successively by impurity centers exciting certain metastable states not accessible to the excitons. The delayed de-excitation of those metastable impurity states, slowed down by reliance on the low-probability forbidden mechanism, again results in light emission slow component. Phosphor degradation Many phosphors tend to lose efficiency gradually by several mechanisms. The activators can undergo change of valence usually oxidation, the crystal lattice degrades, atoms, often the activators, diffuse through the material, the surface undergoes chemical reactions with the environment with consequent loss of efficiency or buildup of a layer absorbing either the exciting or the radiated energy, etc. The degradation of electroluminescent devices depends on frequency of driving current, the luminance level, and temperature. Moisture impairs phosphor lifetime very noticeably as well. Harder, high melting, water insoluble materials display lower tendency to lose luminescence under operation. Examples BAMGAL 10017, U2 plus BAM, a plasma display phosphor, undergoes oxidation of the dopant during baking. Three mechanisms are involved, absorption of oxygen atoms into oxygen vacancies on the crystal surface, diffusion of U2 along the conductive layer, and electron transfer from U2 to absorbed oxygen atoms, leading to formation of U3 with corresponding loss of emissivity. Thin coating of aluminium phosphate or lanthanum phosphate is effective in creating a barrier layer blocking access of oxygen to the BAM phosphor, for the cost of reduction of phosphor efficiency. 
addition of hydrogen, acting as a reducing agent, to argon in the plasma displays significantly extends the lifetime of BAM, U2 plus phosphor, by reducing the U3 atoms back to U2. Y2O3, U-phosphors under electron bombardment in presence of oxygen form a non-phosphorescent layer on the surface, where electron-hole pairs recombine non-radiatively via surface states. ZNS, MN, used in AC thin film electroluminescent devices degrades mainly due to formation of deep level traps, by reaction of water molecules with the dopant, the traps act as centers for nonradiative recombination. The traps also damage the crystal lattice. Phosphor aging leads to decreased brightness and elevated threshold voltage. ZNS-based phosphors in CRTs and FEDs degrade by surface excitation, coulombic damage, buildup of electric charge, and thermal quenching. Electron-stimulated reactions of the surface are directly correlated to loss of brightness. The electrons dissociate impurities in the environment, the reactive oxygen species then attack the surface and form carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide with traces of carbon, and nonradiative zinc oxide and zinc sulfate on the surface. The reactive hydrogen removes sulfur from the surface as hydrogen sulfide, forming nonradiative layer of metallic zinc. Sulfur can be also removed as sulfur oxides. ZNS and CDs phosphors degrade by reduction of the metal ions by captured electrons. The M2 plus ions are reduced to M plus, 2 M plus then exchange an electron and become 1 M2 plus and 1 neutral M atom. The reduced metal can be observed as a visible darkening of the phosphor layer. The darkening and the brightness loss is proportional to the phosphor's exposure to electrons and can be observed on some CRT screens that displayed the same image e.g. a terminal login screen for prolonged periods. Europium doped alkaline earth illuminates degrade by formation of color centers. Y2 silicon oxide, CE3 plus degrades by loss of luminescent CE3 plus ions. Zinc silicate, Mn P1, degrades by desorption of oxygen under electron bombardment. Oxide phosphors can degrade rapidly in presence of fluoride ions, remaining from incomplete removal of flux from phosphor synthesis. Loosely packed phosphors, e.g. when an excess of silica gel formed from the potassium silicate binder is present, have tendency to locally overheat due to poor thermal conductivity. E.g. INBO3, TB3 plus is subject to accelerated degradation at higher temperatures. Topic: Materials. Phosphors are usually made from a suitable host material with an added activator. The best known type is a copper activated zinc sulfide and the silver activated zinc sulfide, zinc sulfide silver. The host materials are typically oxides, nitrides and oxonitrides, sulfides, selenides, halides or silicates of zinc, cadmium, manganese, aluminium, silicon, or various rare earth metals. The activators prolong the emission time afterglow. In turn, other materials such as nickel can be used to quench the afterglow and shorten the decay part of the phosphor emission characteristics. Many phosphor powders are produced in low temperature processes, such as sol gel and usually require post-annealing at temperatures of approximately 1000 degrees Celsius, which is undesirable for many applications. However, proper optimization of the growth process allows to avoid the annealing. Phosphors used for fluorescent lamps require a multi step production process, with details that vary depending on the particular phosphor. Bulk material must be milled to obtain a desired particle size range, since large particles produce a poor quality lamp coating, and small particles produce less light and degrade more quickly. 
During the firing of the phosphor, process conditions must be controlled to prevent oxidation of the phosphor activators or contamination from the process vessels. After milling the phosphor may be washed to remove minor excess of activator elements. Volatile elements must not be allowed to escape during processing. Lamp manufacturers have changed composition of phosphors to eliminate some toxic elements, such as beryllium, cadmium, or thallium, formerly used. The commonly quoted parameters for phosphors are the wavelength of emission maximum in nanometers, or alternatively color temperature in kelvins for white blends, the peak width in nanometers at 50% of intensity, and decay time in seconds. Topic. Applications Topic. Lighting Phosphor layers provide most of the light produced by fluorescent lamps, and are also used to improve the balance of light produced by metal halide lamps. Various neon signs use phosphor layers to produce different colors of light. Electroluminescent displays found, for example, in aircraft instrument panels, use a phosphor layer to produce glare-free illumination or as numeric and graphic display devices. White LED lamps consist of a blue or ultraviolet emitter with a phosphor coating that emits at longer wavelengths, giving a full spectrum of visible light. Unfocused and undeflected cathode ray tubes were used as stroboscope lamps since 1958. Phosphor thermometry Phosphor thermometry is a temperature measurement approach that uses the temperature dependence of certain phosphors. For this, a phosphor coating is applied to a surface of interest and, usually, the decay time is the emission parameter that indicates temperature. Because the illumination and detection optics can be situated remotely, the method may be used for moving surfaces such as high-speed motor surfaces. Also, phosphor may be applied to the end of an optical fiber as an optical analog of a thermocouple. Glow-in-the-dark toys Calcium sulfide with strontium sulfide with bismuth as activator, CA Senior S, Bi, yields blue light with glow times up to 12 hours, red and orange are modifications of the zinc sulfide formula. Red color can be obtained from strontium sulfide. Zinc sulfide with about 5 ppm of a copper activator is the most common phosphor for the glow in the dark toys and items. It is also called GS phosphor. Mix of zinc sulfide and cadmium sulfide emit color depending on their ratio, increasing of the CD's content shifts the output color towards longer wavelengths, its persistence ranges between 1 to 10 hours. Strontium aluminate activated by europium, SRAL204, U2, DY3, is a newer material with higher brightness and significantly longer glow persistence. It produces green and aqua hues, where green gives the highest brightness and aqua the longest glow time. SRAL204, U, DY is about 10 times brighter, 10 times longer glowing, and 10 times more expensive than ZNS, CU. The excitation wavelengths for strontium aluminate range from 200 to 450 nanometers. The wavelength for its green formulation is 520 nanometers, its blue-green version emits at 505 nanometers, and the blue one emits at 490 nanometers. Colors with longer wavelengths can be obtained from the strontium aluminate as well, though for the price of some loss of brightness, in these applications, the phosphor is directly added to the plastic used to mold the toys, or mixed with a binder for use as paints. ZNS, Cu phosphor is used in glow in the dark cosmetic creams frequently used for Halloween makeups. 
Generally, the persistence of the phosphor increases as the wavelength increases. See also lightstick for chemiluminescence-based glowing items. Topic: <laughs> Postage stamps. Phosphor banded stamps first appeared in 1959 as guides for machines to sort mail. Around the world many varieties exist with different amounts of banding. Postage stamps are sometimes collected by whether or not they are «tagged» with phosphor or printed on luminescent paper. Radioluminescence <inaudible> 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 Zinc sulfide phosphors are used with radioactive materials, where the phosphor was excited by the alpha and beta decaying isotopes, to create luminescent paint for dials of watches and instruments radium dials. Between 1913 and 1950 radium-228 and radium-226 were used to activate a phosphor made of silver-doped zinc sulfide ZNS, AG, which gave a greenish glow. The phosphor is not suitable to be used in layers thicker than 25 mg per square centimeter, as the self-absorption of the light then becomes a problem. Furthermore, zinc sulfide undergoes degradation of its crystal lattice structure, leading to gradual loss of brightness significantly faster than the depletion of radium. ZNS, AG-coated spintheroscope screens were used by Ernest Rutherford in his experiments discovering atomic nucleus. Copper-doped zinc sulfide ZNS, Cu, is the most common phosphor used and yields blue-green light. Copper and magnesium-doped zinc sulfide ZNS, Cu, Mg, yields yellow-orange light. Tritium is also used as a source of radiation in various products utilizing tritium illumination. Electroluminescence Electroluminescence can be exploited in light sources. Such sources typically emit from a large area, which makes them suitable for backlights of LCD displays. The excitation of the phosphor is usually achieved by application of high-intensity electric field, usually with suitable frequency. Current electroluminescent light sources tend to degrade with use, resulting in their relatively short operation lifetimes. ZNS, Cu was the first formulation successfully displaying electroluminescence, tested at 1936 by Georges Destriai in Madame Marie Curie Laboratories in Paris. Powder or AC electroluminescence is found in a variety of backlight and night light applications. Several groups offer branded L offerings, e.g., Indiglo used in some Timex watches, or light tape. Another trade name of an electroluminescent material, used in electroluminescent light strips. The Apollo space program is often credited with being the first significant use of L for backlights and lighting. <laughs> White LEDs White light emitting diodes are usually blue ingon LEDs with a coating of a suitable material. Cerium doped YAG, YAG CE3 or Y3 aluminium oxide CE3 is often used, it absorbs the light from the blue LED and emits in a broad range from greenish to reddish, with most of output in yellow. This yellow emission combined with the remaining blue emission gives the white light, which can be adjusted to color temperature as warm yellowish or cold bluish white. The pale yellow emission of the CE3 plus, YAG, can be tuned by substituting the cerium with other rare earth elements such as terbium and gadolinium and can even be further adjusted by substituting some or all of the aluminium in the YAG with gallium. However, this process is not one of phosphorescence. 
The yellow light is produced by a process known as scintillation, the complete absence of an afterglow being one of the characteristics of the process. Some rare earth doped sialins are photoluminescent and can serve as phosphors. Europium doped beta sialin absorbs in ultraviolet and visible light spectrum and emits intense broadband visible emission. Its luminance and color does not change significantly with temperature, due to the temperature stable crystal structure. It has a great potential as a green down conversion phosphor for white LEDs. A yellow variant also exists. Alpha for white LEDs, a blue LED is used with a yellow phosphor, or with a green and yellow sialin phosphor and a red calcin 3 based phosphor. White LEDs can also be made by coating near ultraviolet NUV emitting LEDs with a mixture of high efficiency europium based red and blue emitting phosphors plus green emitting copper and aluminium doped zinc sulfide. ZNS, Cu, Al. This is a method analogous to the way fluorescent lamps work. Some newer white LEDs use a yellow and blue emitter in series, to approximate white. This technology is used in some Motorola phones such as the BlackBerry as well as LED lighting and the original version stacked emitters by using GAN on SICK on INGAP but was later found to fracture at higher drive currents. Many white LEDs used in general lighting systems can be used for data transfer, for example, in systems that modulate the LED to act as a beacon. Cathode ray tubes Cathode ray tubes produce signal-generated light patterns in a typically round or rectangular format. Bulky CRTs were used in the black and white household television TV sets that became popular in the 1950s, as well as first-generation, tube-based color TVs, and most earlier computer monitors. CRTs have also been widely used in scientific and engineering instrumentation, such as oscilloscopes, usually with a single phosphor color, typically green. Phosphors for such applications may have long afterglow, for increased image persistence. The phosphors can be deposited as either thin film, or as discrete particles, a powder bound to the surface. Thin films have better lifetime and better resolution, but provide less bright and less efficient image than powder ones. This is caused by multiple internal reflections in the thin film, scattering the emitted light. White in black and white, the mix of zinc cadmium sulfide and zinc sulfide silver, the ZNS, AG plus zinc, CD, S, AG is the white P4 phosphor used in black and white television CRTs. Mixes of yellow and blue phosphors are usual. Mixes of red, green and blue, or a single white phosphor, can also be encountered. Red, yttrium oxide sulfide activated with europium is used as the red phosphor in color CRTs. The development of color TV took a long time due to the search for a red phosphor. The first red emitting rare earth phosphor, YVO4, U3, was introduced by Levine and Palilla as a primary color in television in 1964. In single crystal form, it was used as an excellent polarizer and laser material, yellow, when mixed with cadmium sulfide. The resulting zinc cadmium sulfide zinc, CD, S, AG, provides strong yellow light. Green, combination of zinc sulfide with copper, the P31 phosphor or ZNS, Cu, provides green light peaking at 531 nm, with long glow. Blue, combination of zinc sulfide with few ppm of silver, the ZNS, AG, when excited by electrons, provides strong blue glow with maximum at 450 nm, with short afterglow with 200 nanosecond duration. It is known as the P22B phosphor. This material, zinc sulfide silver, is still one of the most efficient phosphors in cathode ray tubes. It is used as a blue phosphor in color CRTs. 
The phosphors are usually poor electrical conductors. This may lead to deposition of residual charge on the screen, effectively decreasing the energy of the impacting electrons due to electrostatic repulsion an effect known as sticking. To eliminate this, a thin layer of aluminium about 100 nanometers is deposited over the phosphors, usually by vacuum evaporation, and connected to the conductive layer inside the tube. This layer also reflects the phosphor light to the desired direction, and protects the phosphor from ion bombardment resulting from an imperfect vacuum. To reduce the image degradation by reflection of ambient light, contrast can be increased by several methods. In addition to black masking of unused areas of screen, the phosphor particles in color screens are coated with pigments of matching color. For example, the red phosphors are coated with ferric oxide replacing earlier CD S SHE due to cadmium toxicity. Blue phosphors can be coated with marine blue Ku Nal2O3 or ultramarine Na8 aluminium silicide O24S2. Green phosphors based on ZNS Cu do not have to be coated due to their own yellowish color. Black and white television CRTs The black and white television screens require an emission color close to white. Usually, a combination of phosphors is employed. The most common combination is ZNS, AG plus Zinc, CD, S, Cu, Al, Blue plus Yellow. Other ones are ZNS, AG plus Zinc, CD, S, AG Blue plus Yellow, and ZNS, AG plus ZNS, CU, AL plus Y202S, U3 plus Blue plus Green plus Red, does not contain cadmium and has poor efficiency. The color tone can be adjusted by the ratios of the components. As the compositions contain discrete grains of different phosphors, they produce image that may not be entirely smooth. A single, white-emitting phosphor, zinc, CD, S, AG, O, AL overcomes this obstacle. Due to its low efficiency, it is used only on very small screens. The screens are typically covered with phosphor using sedimentation coating, where particles suspended in a solution are let to settle on the surface. <reduced>, Reduced palette color CRTs For displaying of a limited palette of colors, there are a few options. In beam penetration tubes, different color phosphors are layered and separated with dielectric material. The acceleration voltage is used to determine the energy of the electrons, lower energy ones are absorbed in the top layer of the phosphor, while some of the higher energy ones shoot through and are absorbed in the lower layer. So either the first color or a mixture of the first and second color is shown. With a display with red outer layer and green inner layer, the manipulation of accelerating voltage can produce a continuum of colors from red through orange and yellow to green. Another method is using a mixture of two phosphors with different characteristics. The brightness of one is linearly dependent on electron flux, while the other one's brightness saturates at higher fluxes. The phosphor does not emit any more light regardless of how many more electrons impact it. At low electron flux, both phosphors emit together. At higher fluxes, the luminous contribution of the nonsaturating phosphor prevails, changing the combined color. Such displays can have high resolution, due to absence of two dimensional structuring of RGB CRT phosphors. Their color palette is, however, very limited. They were used e.g. in some older military radar displays. <inaudible> Color television CRTs The phosphors in color CRTs need higher contrast and resolution than the black and white ones. 
The energy density of the electron beam is about 100 times greater than in black and white CRTs. The electron spot is focused to about 0.2 mm diameter instead of about 0.6 mm diameter of the black and white CRTs. Effects related to electron irradiation degradation are therefore more pronounced. Color CRTs require three different phosphors, emitting in red, green and blue, patterned on the screen. Three separate electron guns are used for color production. The composition of the phosphors changed over time, as better phosphors were developed and as environmental concerns led to lowering the content of cadmium and later abandoning it entirely. The zinc CD S Ag Cl was replaced with zinc CD S Cu Al with lower cadmium zinc ratio and then with cadmium free ZnS Cu Al. The blue phosphor stayed generally unchanged, a silver doped zinc sulfide. The green phosphor initially used manganese doped zinc silicate, then evolved through silver activated cadmium zinc sulfide, to lower cadmium copper aluminium activated formula, and then to cadmium free version of the same. The red phosphor saw the most changes. It was originally manganese activated zinc phosphate, then a silver activated cadmium zinc sulfide, then the europium activated phosphors appeared, first in an yttrium vanadate matrix, then in yttrium oxide, and currently in yttrium oxysulfide. The evolution of the phosphors was therefore. ZNS, Ag, zinc silicate, Mn, zinc phosphate, Mn. ZNS, Ag, Zinc, CD, S, Ag, Zinc, CD, S, Ag, ZNS, Ag, Zinc, CD, S, Ag, YVO4, U3, ZNS, Ag, Zinc, CD, S, Cu, Al, Y2O2S, U3, or Y2O3, U3, ZNS, AG, ZNS, CU, AL or ZNS, O, CU, AL, Y2O2S, U3+. Projection televisions For projection televisions, where the beam power density can be two orders of magnitude higher than in conventional CRTs, some different phosphors have to be used. For blue color, ZNS, AG, CL is employed. However, it saturates. Le, Grand, OBR, CE, TB3 plus can be used as an alternative that is more linear at high energy densities. For green, a terbium activated grand 202 terabits 3 plus, its color purity and brightness at low excitation densities is worse than the zinc sulfide alternative, but it behaves linear at high excitation energy densities, while zinc sulfide saturates. However, it also saturates, so Y3 aluminium oxide, TB3 plus or Y2 silicon oxide, TB3 plus can be substituted. LAOBR, TB3 plus is bright but water sensitive, degradation prone, and the plate like morphology of its crystals hampers its use. These problems are solved now, so it is gaining use due to its higher linearity. Y202S, U3 plus is used for red emission. <laughs> Standard phosphor types Topic various some other phosphors commercially available, for use as X-ray screens, neutron detectors, alpha particle scintillators, etc., are, Grand 202S, TB, P43, Green, peak at 545 nm, 1.5 milliseconds decay to 10%, low afterglow, high X-ray absorption, for X-ray, neutrons and gamma Grand 202S, U, red, 627 nm, 
850 microseconds decay, afterglow, high X-ray absorption, for X-ray, neutrons and gamma grand 202s, PR, green 513 nm, 7 microseconds decay, no afterglow, high X-ray absorption, for X-ray, neutrons and gamma grand 202s, PR, CE, F, green 513 nm, 4 microseconds decay, no afterglow, high X-ray absorption, for X-ray, neutrons and gamma Y202s, TB, P45, white 545 nm, 1.5 milliseconds decay, low afterglow, for low energy X-ray Y202s, U, P22R, red 627 nm, 850 microseconds decay, afterglow, for low energy X-ray Y202s, PR, white 513 nm, 7 microseconds decay, no afterglow, for low energy X-ray zinc 0 0.5 CD 0 0.4 S, AG HS, green 560 nm, 80 microseconds decay, afterglow, efficient but low res X-ray zinc 0 0.4 CD 0 0.6 S, AG H senior, red 630 nm, 80 microseconds decay, afterglow, efficient but low res X-ray cadmium tungstate, blue 475 nanometers, 28 microseconds decay, no afterglow, intensifying phosphor for X-ray and gamma calcium tungstate, blue 410 nanometers, 20 microseconds decay, no afterglow, intensifying phosphor for X-ray magnesium tungstate, white 500 nanometers, 80 microseconds decay, no afterglow, intensifying phosphor Y2 silicon oxide, CE, P47, blue 400 nanometers, 120 nanoseconds decay, no afterglow, for electrons, suitable for photomultipliers Yalo 3, CE, YAP, blue 370 nanometers, 25 nanoseconds decay, no afterglow, for electrons, suitable for photomultipliers Y3 aluminium oxide, CE, YAG, green 550 nanometers, 70 nanoseconds decay, no afterglow, for electrons, suitable for photomultipliers Y3, Al, Ga, 5012, CE, YGG, green, 530 nanometers, 250 nanoseconds decay, low afterglow, for electrons, suitable for photomultipliers CDs, in, green, 525 nanometers, ZNO, Ga, blue, 390 nanometers, ZNO, zinc, P15, blue, 495 nanometers, 8 microseconds decay, no afterglow, for low energy electrons, zinc, CD, S, Cu, Al, P22G, green, 565 nanometers, 35 microseconds decay, low afterglow, for electrons ZNS, Cu, Al, O, P22G, green, 540 nanometers, 35 microseconds decay, low afterglow, for electrons ZNCDS, Ag, Cu, P20, green, 530 nanometers, 80 microseconds decay, low afterglow, for electrons ZNS, Ag, P11, blue, 455 nanometers, 80 microseconds decay, low afterglow, for alpha particles and electrons anthracene, blue, 447 nanometers, 32 nanoseconds decay, no afterglow, for alpha particles and electrons plastic, EJ212, blue, 400 nanometers, 2. 4 nanoseconds decay, no afterglow, for alpha particles and electrons, Zinc silicate, Mn, P1, green, 530 nanometers, 11 milliseconds decay, low afterglow, for electrons. ZNS, Cu, Gs, green, 520 nanometers, decay in minutes, long afterglow, for X rays. Ni, Tl, for X ray, alpha, and electrons. CSI, TL, green, 545 nanometers, 5 microseconds decay, afterglow, for X ray, alpha, and electrons. 6 LIF, ZNS, AG, ND, blue, 455 nanometers, 80 microseconds decay, for thermal neutrons. 
6 lif zns cu al o ndg green 565 nanometers 35 microseconds decay for neutrons cerium doped yag phosphor yellow used in white leds for turning blue to white light with a broad spectrum of light topic see also Cathodoluminescence Laser Luminophore Photoluminescence <laughs>